Let us move into the time as we listen and continue with the story of the shack. Hopefully by now most of you have been able to read at least part of the books and listen to the and watch the movie, but if not, here's a section from it. Mac walked to the edge of the dock and looked down. The water lapped only about a foot below where he stood, but it might as well have been a hundred feet. The distance looked enormous. To dive in would have been easy. He had done that a thousand times. But how do you step off a dock onto water? Do you jump as if you're landing on concrete? Or do you step over the edge like you were getting out of a boat? He looked back at Jesus, who was chuckling. Peter had the same problem, how to get out of the boat. It's just like stepping off a one-foot high stair, nothing to it, said Jesus. Will my feet get wet? queried Mac. Of course, water's still wet. Again, Mac looked down at the water and back at Jesus. Then why is this so hard for me? Jesus said, tell me what you're afraid of, Mac. Well, let me see. What am I afraid of, began Mac. Well, I'm afraid of looking like an idiot. I'm afraid that you're making fun of me and that I will sink like a rock. This passage in the book, The Shack, finds Mac in a familiar story that most of us know. In a world where there are a lot of biblical stories people do not know, today we've actually had two known stories in front of us. People usually know about Zacchaeus being in the tree and that Jesus and Peter walked on water. So here we have Mac standing with Jesus. And Jesus had said, come on, Mac. Those are powerful words. Words like that get told to Zacchaeus when he is told to come down from the tree. Words like that, come, are said to Peter as he is preparing to step out of the boat. Come on, Mac. Tell me what you're afraid of. Tell me what you are afraid of, Mac. Are the same types of words that we see with today's scripture. In the New Revised Standard Version, Jesus says, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Or in the message version, courage, it's me. Do not be afraid. Or the easy to read version, which is one of my favorites for younger kids. Don't worry, it's me. Don't be afraid. Or even the common English Bible. Be encouraged. It's me. Do not be afraid. Take heart. Courage. Don't worry. Be encouraged. Come on, Mac. Come on, Peter. Come on, Independence Christian Church. Tell me what you're afraid of. Why? If Jesus is standing right next to us and is known to us as Jesus is in these stories, why are we still so afraid? Because as we continue through a season of Lent, we have to be truthful with ourselves. And Jesus is right next to us, and thus we must find ourselves to be honest. We are afraid. We're afraid of drowning. We're afraid of looking like idiots. Humans are really good at being afraid. And should we be afraid, as the saying goes, love Jesus, but lock your car? One of the lessons that is taught to those like me who work with small children is the importance of making them know that they are truly safe. Children need to feel safe to stay developmentally healthy. But as I moved into young adulthood, obviously the feelings of safety and the awareness of the world began to change. And this was definitely clear as a young adult with the tragedy of 9-11. 
The day after 9-11, one of my seminary professors started to ask us some really difficult questions. And in that moment, we all began to recognize that safety and the feeling of safety is often an illusion. That it's an important aspect of our human survival mode because it makes us feel that we are in control. It makes us feel that we have a sense of power. And even though we know somewhere inside our heads that if someone really wants to break into our car, locking it won't do any good. We still lock our car to make ourselves feel like we have power and control. Because the illusions of power and safety are complex. They are the reasons that insurance industries are always booming. We must be honest, we don't always trust one another, and we, including me, see those who do not lock their cars or make smart choices as irresponsible. And even though we know that bad things happen to good people, we still work really hard to be good people and to put our insurance mode into effect. Because also, if we are honest, we sometimes do not trust God. Many treat God, myself included, sometimes like an insurance company. I mean, Max says in the book, all I want is a God who fixes everything so no one gets hurt. And isn't that what we really want sometimes? No one to get hurt. Especially ourselves, and especially those we love. So we don't really want a real relationship with God, but the person who's like a good neighbor when you need him or her to be there. When the wind is blowing, like it is in today's scripture, just a little too much, and things have gotten a little too out of control, and it's the darkness of night, we all of a sudden just want to call that person who is able to calm the storm. The conversation between Mac and Jesus reminds us, however, that the fear of the what is and the focus on the future is actually what often makes us miss out on the glory that can be found in the moment. And we admit that sometimes we live, we all do it, in the worries of the future and miss out on being present and truly available to God and His Spirit and to one another in the now. But look at these children. As I said during Advent, one of the reasons it's easier for children to sit and listen to the worship and wonder stories is because they, as children, are so faithfully able to be in the moment. They're not already planning lunch or what is happening tomorrow. They, they are able to be in the now with God and with one another. They're not afraid. They don't know how to be afraid. They just trust. Children are also not afraid of the bigger issues in our day-to-day -day lives. And while we live in a world where scary things happy, happen, we must admit that while we're really scared of the big things, usually day-to-day -day, our biggest fears is, well, looking like an idiot. We are afraid of those little moments that challenge our character. Somewhere in those teenage years of life, we started to care what other people thought of us. We rolled our eyes at our parents. Remember this when they're yelling at the sidelines, don't be afraid, you got this. And we secretly really wanted to believe them. But somewhere in our world, we started to learn the fear of failure, the realities of embarrassment, and the social structures of labels and all of their complicated meanings. And so when Jesus looks at us, and Jesus does look at us and says, come on, do not be afraid, we start to go, really? And here's the thing, Jesus doesn't actually make it any easier in today's Bible story. As Peter decides to step out of the boat, the wind is still raging. The chaos still surrounds him. 
And even though by now we know that Jesus has the ability to calm the storm, that is not the point of this story and the connection in this moment. This moment, just like in the shack and just like in the Bible today, this moment is about Mac and it's about Peter and it's about us in the midst of chaos trying to figure out how to truly be faithful in our relationship with Jesus even though there is still wind blowing around us. And as we try to feel faithful, are we willing to look like an idiot for our faith? Or do we do Jesus selfies? Those things that make our faith look much cooler and socially acceptable. Because we're so actually focused on ourselves and our image that the minute the moment, the minute and the moment that the wind begins to blow, we forget to focus on Jesus, and that's when we begin to sink. There's a reason that the phrase, do not be afraid, is repeated over and over in the New Testament. And it's not always for the big dramatic moments, but for the little difficult moments, because we are easily distracted. It is so easy to give in to our fears, both big and little, and we see answers in our society and facts and truths and forget that real answers and real love and real relationship comes with faith. Faith and seeing Jesus. We often see growth in our church views, but not in our church's ability to help growth outside of the walls or just inside of ourselves. We're so afraid of being lost lost ourselves, that we lock our cars, but so often we accidentally lock Jesus inside of them. So many churches and people live with fear as their guide, but the book that we're reading and the Bible that we trust in reminds us that true freedom is found in the love of Jesus. With him we are not lost. We have nothing to fear. We can risk looking like an idiot. We can step from the known to the unknown, even when the wind is blowing around us. We can find joy in the moment of our doubts and our fears, and instead look at Jesus and say, Jesus, what are you calling us to do? Because Jesus, we hear you. You're saying, come down, step out. Let's have lunch. Maybe we get to run or walk on the water like Peter. And we get to hear these words, take courage, courage, take heart, don't worry, we've got this together. Because we are focused on Jesus and able to live in the now, to step out in love and to not be afraid. So come on, come on Independence Christian Church, come on Church Universal out there on Facebook world, come on people of faith who know and love Jesus, do not be afraid. 